In taking a look at race, how do you self-identify? My name is Octavio Warnock Graham. In many cases, I can be whatever you want me to be. Some of the things that people have claimed me as is Greek, Israeli, Puerto Rican, white, black. I can pass for almost anything. I am European and African American. Uh, my mother's white. I was raised by her my whole life. So my mom had me out of wedlock. She raised me until I was about four years old, just she and I. And she met uh, this amazing man. Uh, his name's David Graham. And he adopted me. You know, growing up in my community in the Midwest, there's really a strong sense of family. You have a mother and you have a father, and that makes the family. Nobody in my family looks like me. The brother and sister that I grew up with are very pale skin. They've got light red hair, and I look like an oddball in this family. When I looked in the mirror, I would see myself as the same as the people in that community. There was a really difficult period for me from basically sixth grade to high school, where, for lack of a better word, I was a pariah, partly because of my race. And I really had some severe self-esteem issues. And it wasn't until I got to the East Coast that I started going, okay, it's not the end of the world if I'm black. I went to a college in New York State. It was really the first time that I got out of the monoculture of the Midwest. There were people who came from different backgrounds, who were of different race, who had different cultural experiences. And it was really the first time that I felt like I wasn't an outsider. I started my master's thesis film, which is Silences. Silences is a personal documentary that really asks the question, what were the circumstances around which my mother felt it necessary to deny my blackness? You're telling me that all the lies that you told was to protect me? No. There was nothing else besides that? There were things and, and people and issues that needed me to stay out of my house. And the only way to keep them out was to shut it down. There's a scene in the movie where my grandmother and I, we were cooking together. When did Harriet tell you I was black? Harriet didn't tell me ever you were black because you're not black. I think that gives uh, a real insight to how the community that I grew up in perceives blackness. I have almost no cultural experience with the African American community. The identity that I have now is a part of a larger journey to reach out to my birth father and find out about my story from his point of view and his perspective. And when I was 28, I asked my mother for my birth father's name and I did a Yahoo search. We have a great relationship. It's developing, it's blooming. I talk to him on a regular basis. I have three sisters, I talk to them on a regular basis. I don't think I would be the person I am today without having made that film. I have a nine-year-old daughter, her name's Zora, and there's a real impetus to make sure that she has all of her story being in a community of people who all share that uniqueness that my daughter and I have, I hope will really begin laying the foundation for how she goes through her own journey of self-identification. There's a tendency in this country to demand people to say, what are you? And as a mixed race person, whether it's a privilege or some other quality, I have been given permission to straddle the color lines. The idea of us being in a post-racial society is completely false. There are conversations I hear when people claim me as a white person that they would never say in front of a black community. And as a person who is mixed race, I've been treated in ways that nobody in the white community ever gets treated. And it is something that has to be addressed. Today, I self-identify as a multiracial or biracial person.